Today we're talking to an incredible Australian. She's a motivator, businesswoman, author, athlete, mother, media personality, and a survivor. She is a true inspiration. It is the amazing Churia Pitt. Fritzy! Is this the magnificent Churia Pitt? That's the one and only, mate. Are you driving around in your Outlander at the moment? I sure am. It's a beautiful red, spunky looking outlandish Outlander. Mate, you are, you know what, you are the most driven person that I've ever met and you're actually behind the wheel of the Outlander now, so this works out perfectly. Can I, can I have a chat to you? Is that alright? Let's go for it. Let's have a chat. I'm on a bit of a drive. I know, and I know how much of a character you are and you are one of the funniest women I've ever met as well, but we just want to kick it off first of all because, you know, you just got to remind me and everybody out there, over 10 years ago you were running in that ultra marathon and knowing you probably chasing first place, that was always your goal, but can you tell everyone about that life-changing event that turned your world upside down, Sharia? Yeah, I can. Now, I definitely wasn't chasing first place though. I was just about a quarter of the way through the ultra marathon. I was trapped by a grass fire. I got burnt pretty catastrophically. I got burnt to 65% of my body. Um, I got heli backed out of there four hours after I got burnt and I got transferred to Kununurra Hospital and then I remember waking up a month later in a hospital in Sydney. And so Churia, probably when it happens, I don't know if you can remember that moment, but when, when, when did it sort of hit you in hospital when you woke up and you thought, what, what, what was going through your mind when, it, when you finally comprehended what happened? When I get asked about what, what it was like to get burnt, I don't, I don't really remember Fitzy, but okay. for me, I think the hardest part was the yeah. part in hospital. I think it was obviously grappling with what had happened, this catastrophe. And then also the fact that I couldn't, I couldn't do the most basic tasks. They were suddenly taken away from me. I had to start, you know, start all over again. Since then, you've endured so many surgeries. Um, you wore a compression mask for years. Just for, for you personally, how did it feel when it first, when that mask first came off for good? It was a bit of a love-hate relationship because it was uncomfortable. People couldn't read my facial expressions. It was felt really yep. hot and restricting. Uh, but at the same time, it was a bit of a security blanket. It was this barrier between me and the world. And I was I was really nervous. I was really apprehensive to take it off because I thought, oh, what if what if people don't like what they see? What if uh, people are scared of me? And my psychologist was really good. She said, just start just start small. So take it off when you're eating dinner at night. Take it off if you've got a mate coming over. You know, just do those little those little small things which will make that harder thing a lot easier. Cheria, you definitely look at life a lot differently and, and all this crazy stuff that was going on, there was a lot there'd be a lot of people that would go into their shell, but you decided to be, you know, outlandish, put yourself right out there, no holds barred. When did you first realise your story could inspire so many others and, and what drove you to actually go out there and tell your story? Firstly, it was motivated a little bit selfishly. I wanted people to know about my story. And I also wanted, I wanted to be a visible demonstration as well that we don't all look the same. We all come in different packages and, and that's, that's okay. You know, I'm showing people and showing kids and showing young people that you don't have to look a certain way to be able to do something. You are an inspiration, Cheria, that is for sure. And for someone in your position, I mean, can you go through with me, since the event, some of the first things that you've done again? And I know, you know, did you get back doing triathlons, marathons? Like, what are some of the things that you've conquered? The first things that you did after you got back? There was a lot of firsts, right? Because in hospital, I, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't do the basic things. I couldn't feed myself. I couldn't brush my hair. I couldn't yep. take myself to the bathroom, I couldn't get dressed, all of those things. So first and foremost, like learning how to master those things were really important to me. I was really proud of myself when I was able to run again. So I think the first time I ran, I ran like, I don't know, 50 metres and that was all I had in me. I did the Ironman World Championships, which is, I don't know if you know much about triathlon or Ironman, but it's kind of, a, it's a bit of a big deal. 
to do yep. Iron Man World Championship. She don't sound very impressed, that's all. That's why. I'm just letting you know it's kind oh, of a big deal. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, you've got you've gone from not being able to brush your hair to doing Iron Man championships, and, and you've done like marathons. Did you do Kokoda? I did. Yeah, I did Kokoda. I've done marathons. Um, wow. I learned how to surf again, which is a big deal. I mean, to, to take it to that next level, to be on the front of magazines, to now be one of the, you know, the, the, the best motivational speakers in Australia, it is unbelievable. And the other big one as well, you got engaged to your childhood sweetheart. You've had your first child, you wrote your first book, you've even launched your first fitness program, Run With Churia. The one thing that my accident taught me was how important our relationships are in our lives. And I never realised that before. I mean, I was, I was young, right? I was 24. And I had really amazing family, really beautiful friends. And I had a gorgeous, beautiful boyfriend. But I never yep. stopped to acknowledge how lucky I was to have those people in my life. I've still got my beautiful partner. Uh, and we've got these two beautiful children together. And I feel like we understand what's important, which is each other and our family. You know what? You're your life journey is remarkable. Your positivity, Turia Pitt, is just, it's second to none. Like you are inspiring for a lot of people. And on behalf of Australia, we just want to say to you how remarkable you are to us. So keep doing what you're doing. You are an inspiration. And thank you so much for, for being involved in Mitsubishi's Verse. Thanks, Fitzy. Thanks for having me. No worries. See you, love. Bye.